I try to be as truthful as I can, as great as I can at that moment, and hopefully that inspires you to do something, to, to think something a little differently, to be open. You know, I think what I do is a little different than anybody else. You know, not only write songs and play them and sing them, but also how to record them and, and how to make my own records, essentially. And I thought, this is a story, this is an angle that I have as an artist. You know, everybody's looking for their angle. And, you know, this is part of my story, so I want to talk about it. And if I put Badass and Blind in the title, then I get to talk about it. <laughs> Make it lyrical, magical, mystical, beautiful, radical, and radical, and automatical, like a breathing in time. You know, I'm pretty proud of the rap I wrote because I, I was able to get some really, really choice words in there and make it work rhythmically. So I, I used a thesaurus <laughs> and a rhyming dictionary pretty extensively. <laughs> it's, it's a heavy dose of jazz, definitely soul, and kind of, you know, songs. It's always about songs for me. Um, and then putting in the elements, you know, soul and jazz really are the two big elements that, that I that I have on this album. So, and, and, and of course, guitar. I've always listened to a lot of different kinds of music and always enjoyed that and always tried to incorporate that into what I do. So. When we were <clears throat> growing up, my dad had a, a, a big collection of um, contemporary classical music. So I listened to a lot of what people would think of as strange music for a kid to be listening to, like John Cage and, and Schoenberg and Webern and, you know, opera, uh, as well as jazz, uh, as well as the stuff, the stuff that was on the radio back then, some of it was really good, you know. We had Aretha Franklin on the charts, we had Santana, we had James Taylor. There was a time when it was cool to be searching. It wasn't like everybody wasn't just trying to make the hit, they were searching, trying to make new music. And yeah, everybody wants to be successful. But they were, you know, looking for, for new sounds. Al Jarreau showed us that you could sing in a certain way and sing with a jazz influence and kind of Does anyone want to go out sing in the garden? He sang in real precise and really beautiful time and he would back phrase. He did things that nobody had done before. And kind of almost using his voice as an instrument, you know, uh, some people lead the way and show us what what's possible. And that's what Al Jarreau did for me. Three big guitar traditions that I studied, uh, flamenco, uh, jazz, and classical. And those are the three, and they're all traditions, you know, they all have uh, great, great uh, artists who, you know, uh, somebody like uh, Wes Montgomery or Pat Metheny in jazz, uh, you know, Segovia or the Romero brothers on classical, and uh, somebody like Paco de Lucia or Savicas in flamenco. All of these guitar traditions, I kind of sort of made an amalgam from them and, you know, put them into what I do. Kind of took it, did some different things uh, with the harmony, and changed the key, and I just kind of, I changed the chords a little bit, so it's a little more mysterious, a kind of, do, do, do something with it. So all of these chords are, are not what's normally in the song. Right, right, right. You know, so it's, Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. That one was literally the first record I ever bought. I bought it at Woolworths for $5.99. Vinyl, of course. And, uh, 
it was what was on the, the FM station that I used to listen to. <coughs> kind of album rock FM. Okay, right. And uh, they, they started playing this, this, this song, which had all this synthesizer stuff in the beginning. And I just, it just kind of caught my imagination. And uh, I was talking about it to my wife one day, and she said, you should cover this. I said, OK. So that's the song I wrote. It's kind of a tribute to my dad, really. Oh, OK. That's, that's you know, all that I am. All that I know is in the part, you know, all that I am is in the sound of my song, I'll carry on because of you. So it's, you know, my dad gave me so many tools. One of the tools he gave me was always, always try to be the best at what you do. And don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. Right, right. And, and it's, it's huge for me. Huge. There's always stuff out there to inspire you. It's just a question of whether you're open to it or not. Uh, I tend to be one that, like, when I'm on the road, I'm in performance mode. And when I come home, I'm in writing mode. It's difficult for me to, you know, because it, it takes a certain kind of time and openness and create the space and quiet for me to write and for me to, to, uh, but I'm always writing about what's happening to me so that I can go back over it later. So I like I'm a journaler, you know. I, I write every day. I mean, I, I I want people to be inspired by by what I'm saying on this album, by me doing this and and you know being disabled and. But also, you know, I, I hope people enjoy the music. Uh, but but I I really am making kind of a statement like, hey, you know. Whatever, whatever's happening, whatever obstacles you have, you know, you can, you can turn them into something good. It's not always about overcoming them or getting rid of them. It's about making them into, you know, when Louis Armstrong got that disease of his throat, instead of crooning, he turned off singing like this, and it turned out to be his signature sound. Right? That was a disease he had that that, that he didn't wasn't planning on getting. You know. So sometimes you, sometimes you have to take what you're given and, and turn it into something.